Right. So, oh, I don't think I need that right. So feet it width apart, um, very gently, and I'm sure it's warm, it's warm where you are is, is where I am. So always give yourself sort of leeway with that, make sure to have some water there. A little sip every now and then. Although what we're doing is quite gentle. You can still lose liquid. Remember that the, the Tai Chi posture is one that should allow for a kind of opening up of the body. So that that kind of feeling that the heat is somehow trapped in your body is released. And at the same time, you know, we're not going mad or anything like that. A little bit of movement, the blood circulating is a way of cooling down the body taking the heat away and you'll notice even whether like the moment the the in breath that we take is always sharper and clearer than the out breath so that too sort of releases a little bit of heat be, be careful of areas where you might have a bit of arthritis or a bit of pain because in, in the hot weather, joints and muscles swell up a little bit, and that'll put more pressure on the area that's painful. But again, a little bit of movement should help to take some of that swelling away. So every sort of condition, every environment that we're in, every climatic condition that we're in, is brings its own um, requirements. And as always, Tai Chi is a, an art that we, we learn to adapt to our environment. And, and we move with what is happening around us. Just gently scanning through your body, starting with your feet, and just check the positioning of, of your feet. And you may notice as you turn, a little bit of movement between the feet. It's, you, you wouldn't see, it's not like a big movement of the weight, but as I turn to one side, I feel the leg on that side, there's a little bit more pressure in the foot and then there as well. So even though there's not a movement from the outside, there's the sort of the, the, the prelude to the movement, shall we say. And you can begin to feel that all the way up through your legs, your knees, the thighs. But the idea is to try and stay with your weight 50% in each leg as much as possible. If you are moving, try and work out why you're moving. Sometimes we get this sort of thing going on or this. And, and it might be that there's some stiffening, some tightening in your hips or your lower back. So it's like, you know, if I turn, I, I hit the pressure there, if you like, and I, I hit the stiffness and my body just responds to that by moving away from it. Don't, don't force that to change because if there is tightness there, by by forcing yourself not to move, you'll you'll make the tightness worse. But do have this idea that you're going to be trying to um, keep your weight fifty percent in each leg. So quite a lot of movement in the hips and the sinking back, the dropping of your pelvis, helping to create the the, the environment where that tension can release. And then thinking about your sides and your back, there's some big muscles there in sides and back. And again, you know, if, it's, if, it's, if you've been out in the sun or something like that, they might have just swollen up a little bit. But they're big muscles, they need room to expand and contract. And the 
front of your body hangs from the back rather than being held in. You just get a feeling of your, your rib cage dropping and so on and so forth. Shoulders nice and loose. And then without sticking up in your shoulders, just turn your hands palm up a little bit, raise them up, let your elbows hang down. So it feels like the, the hands are being hung from the ceiling. You know, there's a cord from the ceiling looped around your wrist. And don't, don't, don't lift your hands too, too high. And you want to try and feel that the big muscles of your arms are a little bit loose on the bones. They're working, but they're not too tight and squeezing on the, the, the bones. Somebody once said it reminded them of the, 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 steel, the, the steel cables that, are, that, that you sometimes see on bridges and things like that. Yeah, they're, they're never rigid and tight, they, they always seem to have a curve going through. And then just let your hands drop down. Rolling your weight forwards and backwards. So this is the weight moving in your feet. The feet themselves stay on the ground. You don't want your toes or your heels to come up. So the pivot point is in, in your ankles and what you want to get a feeling for, if I use this pole here, you can just, you can't see it, can you? Okay, so I'll put it there. I keep, the, I keep getting that one. So what I want to do is, as I go forwards, I move away from the upright position. I go back, I go through the upright position. And then I go back, but I'm exaggerating slightly so you can see what I'm doing. Now, when I'm forwards, I want to kind of imagine that, that, that there's like a kind of connection, say, from the, for instance, from the back of my head to the pole, like a cord of elastic that contracts and pulls me back, goes through there, so that we pass through this upright position every time we move. Now, most of the exercises that we do, we keep that upright position, or we, we aim to keep that upright position, but in, in, in practice, we will move away from it a little bit. And our arms, of course, move away from it in that. So think of yourself being moored to that center line, like a, a boat is moored to a, a post in the sea. And you know that the boat will move away, but then come back on a regular basis, and you're never, never going too far. And then probably best to start on your heels, coming forwards until you feel the weight settle into the appropriate point. Instead of going forward anymore, sinking your hips back. So now you're going straight up and down. Again, if I show you the pole here. So it's, it's like I'm going down the pole. And now. So that centre line becomes an important reference point for us. Bring your hands around in front of you, pushing up. And sinking. Body expanding and contracting. Remember, it's important to always have a sense for how far you can go without getting back into the habit of that tightening up. Because we want to be able to feel the movement 
within our body. So it's you know, like water flowing through our body or however you experience it. This idea of, of certainly the body fluids like the blood moving, but also the sense of the movement itself, the, the, the flow of the energy. One more time. And then change into the wild goose. You could argue that we're exploring the potential for this movement away from the center of the body. We're always prepared to, to come back to it. And then change into part in the clouds. Uh, dragon plucks the stars from the sky. One more time. <clears throat> Pushing for directions. First couple of rounds when you do the turn, just focus your attention in your hips, your waist, and just feel how you know, your shoulders and the rest of your upper body just in a sense, sit on that area. So when it turns, it's like you're standing in the middle of a roundabout in, in a children's playground and you're, it, it's, it's moving and you're moving at the same speed.
again for the second round. But then if it suits you, you might find that you're able to hit some of the areas of above that sort of hip waist point, move a little bit further and you do it progressively. So then you, know, you maybe feel a little bit more movement in the area of the side of the plexus, so the spine there turns just a fraction more. And so on building up this sort of like almost tornado-like spiral slowly getting wider as it moves up through the body. But again, really importantly, at no point doing it in such a way that creates a tightening in, in, in the body. This is never going to be a competition. And it's more again about exploring. How far are you able today to turn without that stiffening, without that straining, and without a kind of judgment on that as well. One more round. And then changing. Remember the first few of these are done without the turn. But again, that sort of expanding quality up through your body doesn't necessarily require the turn. And it's really something to notice. You know, it's this idea of four ounces overcoming or moving a thousand pounds, a relatively small amount of effort in the right place, just gradually builds like a wave coming up through the body. So this time if it's comfortable, adding that little turn. And then switch sides. So first of all, without the turning. And again, remember the, the phrase I like to use when, you know, when I'm talking about how we approach developing these different exercises, is, is that we cultivate them. And then it's comfortable with the turn. Now, go back to this movement, just letting your hips drop in back. 
and pushing up. So I'm going to go back to the poll. I might have something better actually. Not, not today. Okay, this is it. So there. Again, I'm sliding up and down. And my pelvis is more or less level. You know, it's got that kind of orientation. What's, what's going to happen now? This is for um, well in a boat in the middle of the lake. I don't just let my hips drop back. I actually tilt the pelvis. So now I'm sort of pivoting around that point. I've still got this awareness of, of, of I still want my weight to go down through 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 the pole. What I don't want to happen is this. Because now I'm going to fall forwards. So it's the hips going back there and then back and then down, but as they go down, they're naturally going to tuck under. So that brings me up five. So we're using the elasticity of the body to allow us to move away from that, that, that center line, that point of equilibrium, that line of equilibrium. Remember the Chinese term is Zhongding, central equilibrium. I suppose a bit like a seesaw, we pivot on the top of the lace. Hips go back, we pivot. Then the hips go back a little bit more and then drop down. One, two, three, and then four, and then up again. Okay, and then we're in a boat in the middle of the lake. So this gives us a bit of leeway bit of choice about you know we don't we don't spend all our lives upright we lean forwards and so on and so forth and we want to learn how to do that without compromising those really fundamental principles in Tai Chi One more time. Now, transfer your weight from side to side. Once again, using the visual image of the, the, the pole. Here, if I'm 50% in each leg, it's halfway between the feet. And then see how it moves across. It doesn't get all the way you'll notice. It doesn't get as far as the foot and it won't get as far as the foot until really I'm here. So yeah, I'm just, just trying to give you a visual image for something that, that, that doesn't exist, but that is useful to, to imagine. And what we don't want to do is of course, tilt away. So you go into one leg and then you let the knee and the other foot go forwards. So there's a sense of dropping in both hips and your heel comes off the ground. As you can see, I tend to turn my feet out when I do these sort of exercises. I tend to be a little bit wider than, than, than hip width again, we, you know, we have certain amount of choice about exactly where our feet are and 
how we're using them. But then from this point, really all you need to do is to flex your foot and your foot is off the ground and you can bring it. It's quite low to the ground when we do this. To get the foot to come higher, what we do is we go through all that, then we rotate the hip and the knee comes up and the foot comes up underneath it, of course. So we use this step in movement in stretching between heaven and earth. So come back to let's stand in a moment. Well, we'll add in the upper body movements for stretching between heaven and earth. So go back to this sinking down and pushing up, hands in front of you. And then turn one hand palm down. And as your body expands on one side, you push up. And then hands nearly touch in front of your belly. Extend in and tap in. Remember, this is an exercise with several different stages. I won't call them levels. I don't want to create that idea. And so what you want to do now is, you know, if you're comfortable, just, just go to the point that is best for you. But start off by transferring your weight into the side of the hand that's pushing up. Once you're comfortable with this, we start to, to build up the potential for the step in in exactly the same way we just did a few moments ago without the arms. So first of all, you know, when your weight goes say into your right leg, your left hip drops and pushes the knee forward so the heel comes off the ground. And part of the idea here is that the, the, the increase in weight in each leg is actually a slow incremental one rather than a sudden one. So it becomes easier to account for it. You raise your toes and bring the foot in. Now, when you step a little bit wider, as I tend to, it's probably going to be easier to put your heel down first. I mean, you notice that I drop down slightly to get that wider stance. If you're stepping in a narrower stance, you might find it better to put the ball of your foot down first. As indeed is you know, what we're doing at the moment when we step in is the ball of the foot goes down. It just seems more natural that way. Both ways are used in Tai Chi, and I've, for me, the difference is the width of the step. And then again, if it's comfortable, just raising the toes. One more. Good, check out. So again, still in the um, hip width stance. And again, thinking about this horizontal line across the hips. 
you were in the class the other day, I, again, I really emphasized the fact that these lines are imaginary. They're not real anymore. You know, there, aren't, there aren't any straight lines there. What they are is, can be, is, is a useful way of orientating yourself. So mostly we keep the pelvis level, as I said, but now just tilting from side to side. So this is going to go into the exercise swimming dragon. Once again, I'll show you with the pole. So here, there's, 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 there's the set. What I do is I, I want my, my, my body to curve away from the pole. So you notice that my hip's gone out there and then I go back the other way. So the curve is a nice shallow curve through the body. What it isn't is this or this. Because this is going to twist the back up. And of course, uh, if I really exaggerate, you see my knees are moving as well. So there's this long curve all the way down through. But again, with that point of equilibrium, that line as a reference point. Remember, this is one that you can do with your feet together or apart, traditionally done with your feet together. But if it's easier for you, feet apart, that's fine. Hands gently pressed together, just following the movement. I'm going to bring my feet together. And we'll see more movement in my knees there. It, it is a strong exercise, so please be careful with this one. And you've got the three circles, belly, solar plexus, head and shoulders. And you drop down and go across. Just as far as you're comfortable. If you can't get below that circle, don't strain to get there. So, and likewise, this, this, this top one. And again, this is how it is sort of meant to be done, if you like, but it's also meant to be done safely. So, I mean, you, you, you might find, for instance, that just doing this is easier. A smaller movement. And hopefully you'll find that if you do that, then you can build up to the bigger movements. Whereas if you just like, strain your back or your knees, that's not going to happen. Swimming dragon. Remember you know, that those big muscles in your back and sides need space to move in. Which seems, yeah, it's quite tricky with this exercise, of course. This time go in the other direction. And of course, there are real limits here for how far you can go before either you fall over or else your body's really stiffening up. So it's a classic exercise where the smaller movements are what's required. And then check out. I think one of the ideas here is to do certain exercises like swimming dragon and rowing a boat, which are a little bit exaggerated, so that we 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 can use those exercises to give us a sense of what's going on within the body. Um, and so we, we, we want to move bigger because bigger movements are easier to spot, but not so big that they override the, the smaller movements. Because if you can retain the memory of the smaller movements, we'll retain some of that movement, even when we're not doing that particular exercise. Hands on the shoulders, rolling forwards. 
when I was first taught this exercise, I remember the other day, actually, I forgot a long time, but we were taught to really make it a big movement, squeeze the shoulder blades together, we were told. But since teaching it, I've moved away from that and you know, encouraged people to make softer movements and actually realised that in doing that, I was feeling more happening in chest and upper back. And it's, again, it's that that I want you to feel this time moving your weight and turning so that it becomes an alternating move but we're moving into bear play of course so this time let your hand come out because you're turning but your hand is going forward you're turning away from the hand i'll exaggerate there so there's a kind of opening there, it's not that much. That area there is quite important for our general mobility. It also, there's a little line that goes down from the shoulder, a little valley that goes, that, that, that shadows the, the shape of the top of the bone. And halfway along that little curved line, that little curved valley, is a point for the lungs, lung one. Um, and because of that and the movement in, in, in the chest, I think this is a great exercise for chest and lungs and ribs. And the movement there. So your breath come naturally, but if you, if, if you, like the idea of working with the breathing pattern, breathe in as you come to the middle and breathe out as you go to the side. One more time. Good. One foot forwards. Let your weight settle in the middle. And again, yeah. Oh, we have that. And again, you know, when we when we move, it's going to be just just as we were doing with the um, sideways movement. But also, just give yourself a chance to, to settle. Think about those last few exercises in the swimming dragon, we're in a boat, bear play. They're all, they're all exercises where our back is quite mobile. Um, so when we're in this position, we don't want to feel that we're having to stiffen up our back because we want that being the movement of energy in the back as we begin to transfer the weight. So begin to transfer your weight now, because if there isn't that sense of movement in the back, then whatever's happening in the legs in terms of movement is gonna to struggle to reach the arms. Remember your spine is flexible. It's not a solid structure. It's composed of all these little vertebrae with the, the, the cartilage pads between them, little muscles between each vertebra, helping to keep the whole lot in line. And it is naturally curved. Most of us have extra curves in our spine, but it is naturally curved. So it, 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 it naturally has an element of, of, of movement in it. You need to drop your weight so your back's not trying to support your weight, because that's the classic thing that we're tied to your arm. And then 
raising heel and toes. So remember, when we did this sideways, raising the heel and in, in this exercise, raising the toes involves our hip dropping. So if I do this from the side, I go into the back leg and I drop down and my toe comes up. This is wildly exaggerated, by the way. And then I go forwards and I drop and, and I drop down. It's like boom. Um, again, this is <laughs> that, that was way too big. But you want that dropping sensation through both hips. And that actually helps to begin to move your foot. And then once again, we just flex or Extend the anchor, and I think it'll be a flex here. Yeah, flex, come in. If, if this is difficult for you, and it is a difficult exercise, so even if it's not difficult for you, one of the things I would recommend that you can do is actually, particularly with the back foot, don't raise the toe, just pull the foot in and push it out a few times. Remember, raising your toes and, and your, your, your heel in those circumstances is, should be, and it isn't always, but it should be purely a matter of your ankle flexing. So that in theory, there's no reason for you to lose that alignment of the, the, the body. What often happens though, is here, I go back, you can see I'm, I'm still in line, and then I go to lift my toes and I do this. Now I'm leaning backwards, or yeah. some variation on, on, on that. That's why I'm building it up like this, so you can just identify the individual components of the movement. And that raising of, of your toes or your heel is, a little bit easier, I think, with the back foot, I find. Actually, shouldn't throw your shoulders, shouldn't throw your hips out of line. And in theory, neither should the rotation of your hip that pulls your knee up, that enables you to step slightly higher. So once you've established the line of your body over one leg, the actual physical mechanism of the stepping shouldn't affect that in theory. <laughs> theory is one thing, of course, practice is another. And then on the other side, now this is where you know, we're doing those exercises, that's, this is where holding on to something can be really useful so that you can find for yourself how these things work. And then raising your toes and your heel. and stepping in. And taking a couple of steps in whichever direction is best for you.
and then going back. It's quite interesting to try doing this on an uneven surface, by the way. Worth doing just to see how your body adapts to the changes. Bring a bit parallel. So we, we often break movements down in Tai Chi and get into really fine detail. This may seem a contradiction because I often use the phrase when one part of the body is in motion, the whole body is in motion. This is partly why I've changed the last motion to engage. So when one part of the body, the whole body is engaged. Because although when I go to take a step, like this say, this is the part of the body that's moving. We don't want the hips to move or so on and so forth. But to maintain that equilibrium, the body has to be engaged. Um, you know, it doesn't, it, 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 it it, it, it doesn't just, just happen. So there is stillness within the movement. But also, you know, when, when, when I go to do this, I can also feel that there's movement, if you like, within the parts of the body that, that, that are still. Okay, have your right foot forwards. And hands to your sides. So yeah, doing this on slightly uneven ground is, is quite interesting. Once you've got the idea of alignment and equilibrium as sort of benchmarks, and provided you're not interfering with the body, so you know, you're not tight around your hips, for, for instance, then that intent to move and to maintain equilibrium Means and the, the, the softness of, of the, 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 the body means that your body will, will begin to make changes as it needs to. A lot of those changes, in, in the instance I'm talking about, you know, over, over the rough, uneven ground, will be around hips and pelvis. So it's actually quite good to, to do these sometimes on ground that's slightly bumpy. After all, when we go outside, you know, we don't have flat pavements to walk on, at least not very often. Now change into fisherman cast the net. and pushing away. Good, now change the other side.
and then change and change. Okay. So to finish, we're going to do a scoop and see and looking at the scar. We haven't done that for, for, for a while. Again, first of all, let me just demonstrate what's happening in, in the, the, the hip and, and the centre of the body with the benefit of the pole. This time I start with, with, with my, my, my weight back and there's, there's the, the upright pole. And like in rowing the boat, I tilt backwards. But this time, there's a, cer a certain amount of my centre of gravity is going to go forwards. I've got the leg there and I kind of aim towards there. So now I'm pulled forwards. So this is getting tricky. Yeah, there, there you go. I, I go forwards and then there's that seesaw effect. The hips dropping back, bring me back to the upright position. And what that does is if you see where if you see where the foot is, that's where I want my weight to go, and my pole, you know, that my my, my centre eye is there. So tilting forwards helps to take you forwards. Dropping back and coming to the upright position helps to stop me. So in other words, I don't just do this and fall over. Remember, I said, said about being moored to this center line. Having that in the back of your mind as a as a reference point is actually really useful. So be careful with this one as always it's, it's, a, it's a tricky exercise. Um, so have, have your right foot forward, front foot slightly turned out, hands in front of you. So I'll, I'll exaggerate as usual, don't lock this front knee up. I tilt forwards and I feel myself being carried forward into the front foot. I just let my hips drop back and I settle into whatever is the appropriate position for me. And then I start again. Now again, these little movements of the pelvis are actually a, a larger reflection of the small movements that we make when we just walk around in ordinary circumstances. Our pelvis isn't held level all the time. As I said, it adapts to whatever sort of ground we're, we're, we're on, but also, you know, kind of like we reach out and we lean out and so on and so forth. There's movements in and around the hips and the pelvic floor are really important for our mobility. One more of these on this side. And then on the other side. This is, of course, an exercise where if you feel like it, if it's appropriate, you could make it a slightly bigger movement. You'll start to get a soft stretch in the back of the extended leg and up through the buttocks and into your back. And as always, we want to be very careful with that. And as always, we want to remember part of the aim here is to, is to maintain space and movement within the body, not simply to stretch. 
So we don't often stretch in these exercises. One more time. Good, and bring to each other. Lovely. Open your hands together. And tapping over your face. Over your head and neck. Down to one shoulder. One. The other side. And on your back. And your hips. And your legs. Keep your belly. And the upper part. So once again, coming back to standing, a couple of slow, gentle breaths. I see your hips drop back and pushing up. Wrapping your arms around, embracing the tiger, drawing in, returning to the mountain. Just be aware that as you push up, there is still a sense of being pulled down. So maybe focus on your hips and there is a, your hips are attached to the ground by a thread of elastic that you need to sort of gently pull against as you push up. In the same way, as you sink down, it's like you know, if you push some, if you push a ball into water, you feel the resistance of the water straight away and it builds the deeper down you push it. So that eventually the ball gets pushed up. So even though the, the dominant movement is either a sinking down and a contraction or a pushing up in an expansion, there's, a, there's the opposite element always in there waiting to take over at the appropriate time. One more time. And stay. And shake Right, well, that went very quickly. We didn't do that many exercises, did we? But never mind. Hopefully, some of that detail was 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 interesting for you. Thank you very much, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your day. We've still got the good weather, so um, hopefully that. Mike, that was good. Jolly good. Graduate cheers for Roger. Yep. Cheers. See you next week. See you Thanks very Mike. much, everybody. Mike. Hi, Margaret. Mike. Um.